Dorothy Stratton was a teenager dishing out soft serve at a Dairy Queen in Vancouver when she caught the attention of Paul Snyder, a local pimp with aspirations of fame and fortune in Hollywood. The year was 1978, and Snyder saw something in young Stratton he suspected could be profitable. So he began grooming her for his own agenda. He convinced her to do a nude photo shoot with a professional photographer, and just like that, she became an overnight sensation. For the next couple years, the busty blonde girl next door became Playboy's Playmate of the Year, and her career continued to grow at an exponential rate. Actress Colleen Camp, who starred alongside Stratton in the 1981 motion picture They All Laughed, described her as being otherworldly. Her beauty was breathtaking. Camp was quoted as saying, Time would stop and you felt like you were in a frozen moment. Tragically, before she could ever reach the height of her career, Stratton was brutally murdered by Paul Snyder, the very man who discovered her. There's a lot more to this tale worth telling. Keep watching to find out what motivated Snyder to take Stratton's life. From Dairy Queen to the Playboy Mansion Stratton started working at Dairy Queen in Vancouver when she was a teen to help out her mother, who worked as a lunch lady. She worked there all throughout high school and was a senior when she met Snyder. Snyder had previously made a pretty decent profit working as a promoter for automobile and cycling shows, but it wasn't enough to accommodate his extravagant lifestyle. So he turned to pimping out young girls on the side for extra income. He wasn't particularly low-key about his illicit business ventures either. He drove around in a flashy black Corvette, wore a garish mink coat, and dangled a gem-encrusted golden star of David around his neck. He was known as the Jewish pimp, and played up that persona as much as he could. Numerous people in Stratton's circle knew that Snyder was a predator looking for another opportunity, but Stratton was too naive to notice. She truly believed everyone was essentially good at heart. Snyder took advantage of Stratton's insecurities. He knew she was vulnerable and tapped into that. He would shower her with lavish gifts, fancy dinners, and expensive dresses. And it worked. Snyder, who was 26 at the time, even took Stratton to her senior prom. He was like a wolf on the prowl. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And stick around, we haven't even gotten to any of the nitty-gritty details yet. Snyder convinced her to take her clothes off. In 1978, Playboy was hosting a contest they called the Great Playmate Hunt to scout for new talent to be featured in the magazine for its 25th anniversary. Snyder was able to convince Stratton, who was 18 at the time, to do a nude shoot with a professional photographer. He assured her new doors and opportunities would open for her. She was apprehensive. In an interview with a local Canadian news channel, she explained she had never done any nude photography before, and it took a couple of weeks of Snyder's prodding for her to be convinced. When Playboy saw Stratton's test shots, they were very impressed. They arranged for her to fly out to L.A. to meet the magazine's editors. It was the first time she'd ever been on an airplane, and when she arrived, she was picked up by a limo. Another first for her. Marilyn Grabowski, the magazine's photo editor at the time and close confidant of Hugh Hefner, recalls Stratton was very naive. She described her as inexperienced, unused to her surroundings, and not used to thinking she was really beautiful. She didn't make the cut at first. The January 1979 centerfold ended up going to Candy Loving, a senior at the University of Oklahoma. Playboy figured she was more capable of handling the spotlight that came with the honor. According to Jenna Keough, Playmate of the Month in November 1980, Stratton was every bit as beautiful as loving, but she just wasn't ready for that kind of fame. Still, Hefner was so excited about Stratton's photo, he ended up naming her Miss August later that year. He also gave her a job as a Playboy bunny at the Playboy Club in Century City. She was just 18. She wasn't even able to serve alcohol. Instead, she worked the door. All of a sudden, she was attending some of the most exclusive parties in Hollywood. It was a brand new world and she was super excited about it. At the same time, she was a bit overwhelmed and clung to the only person she knew. Unfortunately, Snyder was probably the worst person she could have turned to for support. She would frequently call him to give him the play-by-play -play of her life. She thought that he was the cause of her success, so she leaned on him heavily and gave him more trust than she should have. Stratton found her footing while Snyder lost his. Playboy continued to welcome Stratton with open arms, but Snyder wasn't received nearly as warmly. People found him to be offensive and a bit of a nuisance. Even Hugh Hafner was beginning to grow tired of his antics. Whenever Snyder would visit the Playboy mansion, he would try to hook up with other girls, despite the fact he was with one of the most beautiful women there. Eventually, he was caught with another girl and security kicked him out. He was told he would only be allowed back if he came with Stratton. 
In June of 1979, Stratton and Snyder got married, despite the fact that Hefner and Grabowski both were opposed to the union. Stratton felt like she couldn't get out of the marriage even if she wanted to. From her perspective, everything she had accomplished was only because of Paul. After appearing on Playboy's Roller Disco and Pajama Party on ABC in 1979, Stratton began landing small roles in films and TV programs, like Buck Rogers in the 25th Century and Fantasy Island. In 1980, she was named Playmate of the Year. Additionally, she landed the lead role in the sci-fi film Galaxina. And that's around the time when things started going downhill with her and Snyder. Paul had viewed Stratton as his own property. He felt like he had made her. So when she started to find happiness outside of the confines of their arrangement, he was furious. The relationship quickly unraveled and they ended up separating. Filmmaker Peter Bogdanovich was spending a lot of time at the Playboy Mansion when he became acquainted with Stratton. He quickly became infatuated with her and decided to write her a role in his upcoming film They All Laughed, starring John Ritter, Audrey Hepburn, and Ben Gazzara. It was going to be her big break. Snyder, on the other hand, was becoming increasingly desperate as he lost more and more control over Stratton's career. At one point, he tried to finish up a project he had started with Stratton before they got married, but when she saw the design, she turned down the deal. That was the last straw. After that shutdown, Snyder had no further income. Around this time, Paul met another teen girl named Patty Larman, whom he was trying to turn into his next Playboy model. She even moved into his West L.A. home. Larman described Snyder as being obsessed with Stratton and very distraught over the fact she was no longer in his life. Stratton ended up falling for and moving in with Bogdanovich after they finished up filming in New York. She then met with Snyder and expressed her desire for a peaceful separation. She even offered a settlement for Snyder since he had helped her get to Hollywood. And that's when he snapped. At first, he borrowed a revolver from a friend and started lurking outside Bogdanovich's house. But after his friend asked for his gun back, Snyder bought a 12-gauge shotgun from someone in the classifieds. He picked up the weapon on the evening of August 13, 1980 like something out of a horror film. The day after Snyder got the gun, Stratton went to his house to negotiate the terms of their divorce, despite the fact everyone close to her had warned her not to go alone. Lowerman left earlier that morning because she knew Stratton was coming over, and Snyder's roommate, Dr. Kushner, had spent the previous evening with a girlfriend and subsequently went straight to work in the morning. When Lowerman and Kushner came back home, they noticed Stratton's Mercury Cougar was parked in front of the house, so they assumed Stratton and Snyder had reconciled their differences and were spending time together. After a few hours of silence, Kushner and Lowerman decided to go check in. After knocking on the door with no answer, Kushner opened the door. What he found was like something out of a horror film. Snyder and Stratton were both dead, naked in a pool of blood. Police were later able to determine Snyder had raped Stratton before he shot her in the face. After he killed her, he turned the gun on himself. Stratton was just 20 years old when she died. Stratton's death sent shockwaves across Hollywood. It was clear she was an up-and-coming star with potential, but the world never got to see her shine. Do you think Stratton would have become a superstar if she hadn't been murdered? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.